Hello and welcome to this video where we look at solving the challenge that I sent out to everybody last week of can you show the subtotals and grand totals for each person in this list. And we wanted a future proof solution. So I don't just want to write some functions in some cells that I can potentially copy paste and manipulate. That is not what we're after. We want this to be refreshable. So that probably means that we're going to be using Power Query. That would be the obvious, but certainly not the only choice. Now there are two key problems with this data set. It's given to us in a pivot table style, even though it's not a pivot table. So we have the names of the people and the items in the same column, column A, and they need to be separate columns. We also have a problem in respect that all the numbers are not being stored as numbers. We can see them on the left hand side of the cell. And if I was to click in a cell and try the is number function on one of them, I can see the result is false. So they are not numbers and we will need to convert them to numbers in order to be able to use them. So I'm going to see a power query solution here. I'll start by selecting the range, including the grand total here, and I'm gonna load that into Power Query. So if I click data and from table slash range, this will prompt me to convert it into a table, which for some reason has appeared on the other side of my screen. And I'll click OK to confirm that that is what I want. The Power Query editor loads, which is always very exciting. And I'm going to begin just by collapsing the queries pane and on the right hand side, giving it a very nice name, such as subtotal problem. Or maybe I should have called it subtotal solution, but let's get on with it. Now in the applied steps, we've got that connection to the table source, and we also have the change type step. And those of you who use Power Query lots are very familiar with that. It's actually doing a good job for us right now because looking at columns two and three, we can see that are already converted into numbers. So that problem is solved simply by loading it into Power Query and getting Power Query to detect the data type. And obviously we could have specified that data type ourselves, but the automatic detection has taken care of business. The next main issue here is dealing with the single column of names and items. And to handle that, I am going to write two conditional columns in order to separate that sales column into their individual name and item columns. So if I click on add column at the top and then conditional column, this will give me my add conditional column window. And I'll give this column the name of name because this first one will have the name of the individual such as Andrew, Jill, Howard, etc. And to do this, I'm going to specify that if the units column is equal to null. So check your case here. But if I'm checking that it is equal to null, looking at the data, every name has a null value in units. There is a pattern there. Then the output I will specify is a column and that column will be sales. So the output will be the person's name if the units column says null. Else I will return null. Now, if I click OK, that creates that new column with either the individual's name or the null value. And with that column selected, I will click transform fill down and that will populate the null values with the individual's name. So what I've achieved here is I've managed to get the person's name on the same row as the item. So I've got that complete row now. This is brilliant. What I now want to do is remove the unnecessary rows, which are the ones that have the person's name in sales and name. And let's add column, another conditional column, where we're going to create a reverse of the logic. I'm going to say that this one is called item, 
And if the column name of units does not equal null, then the output will be cells. So very similar to before, otherwise null. But we're just reversing that logic. So if it's instead of equal to null, if it's not equal to null, then it's not a name, therefore it must be the item. So if I click OK, that will create this column now with the item names. Now bear in mind right at the bottom that we do still have the grand total row in here, but that's not a problem because if we filter from the item column here, and if we filter out the nulls, that is gonna take care of the grand total column because that has a null in this row and the name columns that we want to remove. So removing null, and this is our complete set of data. We now have the name and item separate. We can go and remove the sales column, no longer needing that. We could select the name and item columns and drag them into the first position if we were concerned about the order of this. Specify our data types as text, just adding some final polish to the solution here now. And we'll close and load this back to Excel. So if I click on Home, I'm going to drop down for Close and Load and Close and Load 2. So this will close the editor and bring me back. I'm choosing close and load two here because my default load is connection only. And for this demo, I'm going to load it directly into a pivot table. I don't need the table kind of twice here, although it certainly could depend on what your requirements are. I'm gonna put this on a new worksheet. Let's add it to the model always. Click OK, add it to this new sheet. And to generate the result that we require, I'm simply gonna tick the boxes for name, item, units, and amount. Pivot table will know what to do with it. I can then right click, bring in a number format. Let's throw this into at dollars because that was uh, requested. Let's just put a <laughs> Australian dollars. I don't think it's specified. It's easier to get to. I'll tell you what, let's remove those decimals. This is just a great opportunity, and when you're learning, that's what you're after, to get your hands on some data, have a problem, and to find your way of fixing that problem. I hope you found it enjoyable, and I hope you learned from it. If you enjoyed this video, you enjoyed this challenge, subscribe to this channel so you'll be updated with the latest tutorials and challenges and, and live meetups which we offer. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.